South Ark Spotlight is brought to you by Maxwell Hardwood Flooring. Maxwell Hardwood Flooring, located in Monticello, has been producing quality, solid, and engineer hardwood flooring for over 28 years. The company and sister companies, Washita Hardwood and Townsend Inc. in Warren, are proud to be providing American-made flooring to distributors and retailers from coast to coast while serving our local communities right here at home. Maxwell Hardwood Flooring, your best start for a great finish. Well, we want to welcome everyone to South Ark Spotlight, our program uh, trying to educate the people of Southeast Arkansas on various issues. Uh, put on by SeleneRiverChronicle.com and sponsored by Maxwell Hardwood Flooring and Townsend Hardwood Flooring and Washita Hardwood Flooring uh, located here in Warren. I've got two very special guests with me uh, this morning and we're going to talk about water and uh, particularly our, our water supply. I'd like to welcome uh, Ginger Reisinger, if I'm saying that right, and she is a hydraulic tech with the Union County Conservation District. And of course, our own Tanae Reap, uh, who is manager of our water and sewer department here in Warren. I'm glad to have both of you ladies here with us today. And and uh, I guess I ought to, ought to be clear today that you and I are not kin to each other, uh, uh, even though I am kin to your husband. So <laughs> a little bit there, we're cousins, but we're glad to have both of y'all with us today. And I, I want to kind of talk about the, the Sparta water system, uh, water, the underground system, and uh, hopefully a lot of our uh, viewers will know something about, or at least have heard about before, because that's where our underground water comes from. In, in this part of the state. So today I wanna, wanna start with you. Uh, you run the water and sewer department for the city of Warren. So in a, in a just kind of a brief manner, make sure our listeners understand where Warren's water supply comes from, how we get it and kind of how much we use on a daily basis, that type of thing. Um, so we pull out of the Sparta Aquifer um, we have um, two wells that we primarily pull out of. Our wells are anywhere from 980 feet to 1100 feet deep to get to that aquifer. So we get our water from wells. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. Okay. And uh, about, about how, how much do we uh, pull out? I know it varies, obviously. It's not the same all the time, but about how much on the average daily do we use water in Warren? Um, in the winter, we average 850 to 900,000 a day, and during the summer, it's anywhere from a million to a million point, or 1.2 million gallons. a day. Gallons. Gallons, okay. Mm -hmm. So we just, we, you know, people often, we often take this for granted. You know, you mm -hmm. turn the faucet on and it's your water right. comes out, okay? And it goes into the, into the drain and, you know, goes into, we're not going to get into wastewater today. That's a whole different uh, animal, of course, which you also have to tend to and to oversee with your department. But, uh, you know, good quality water is an important attribute to any community. You got to have good water and plenty of it. And over the years, there's been a lot of discussion in South Arkansas and East Arkansas. And Ginger, I'm going to kind of kind of move to you on this about the aquifers, you know, levels dropping, we're running out of water, we may have to go to some other kind of surface water system, which some places do with a, right. a lake of some kind or something, then you have to treat the water completely different. Uh, talk a little bit about what you do. You work for a Union County Conservation District and of course Union County, El Dorado area is also in the Sparta system. So can you tell us uh, kind of what you do, first of all? I'd be glad to. Uh, in 1996, they first declared the, the first critical water use area in Arkansas, and that included the five-county area that I work. Uh, it's Washita, Union, Bradley, Calhoun, and Columbia. And I have wells that I measure in each of those counties. And we also have some automated data logger wells where we have a transducer put down in the well and it takes a measurement once a day. And then I go out once a month and download that data. And that gets sent to the United States Geological Survey. So um, 
since 1996, uh, that's when the water levels dropped the most and they got down to dangerously low stages. Uh, in the past, a Sparta well should drop 50 feet, say every two years. And at and around 96, 97, 98, 99, they were dropping 50 feet a year, some of the wells. So it was an alarming rate. And um, whatever the reason was, we knew the United States Geological Survey had said that we had to decrease the usage by 72% because within seven years, the Sparta would not be able to recharge. It would, it would go dry, basically, uh, if we did not reduce that usage by 72%. So in Union County, we went to work uh, and we were, that's why I was measuring wells to keep an eye on the levels. Uh, <clears throat> we also had a person that was hired to make the public aware of the situation. And anytime you've got something like this, you have to have the public backing you. You've got to make people aware of what's going on. And like you said before, people turn the water on. If it comes on, you know, great, everything's good. But it's not good. You've got to know that, that you are in danger of losing the only water supply we have in this area. And it, it goes from mid-Arkansas down through the southern part of the state into Louisiana, about halfway down, a little bit into Texas. Um, and when that's your only aquifer, then you really have to do something to protect it. And that is the Sparta that you're that talking about, Sparta. what's called the Sparta. The Sparta There's all aquifer. kinds of other aquifers, right? Uh, but that's the one that, that, that's that, the, that we live in. There are other aquifers, but not in our area. Right. Now there's uh, alluvial, um, which are shallow pockets of water, um, but those are not aquifers. Um, yeah. There's just, that is the only aquifer that we have in, in this part of the the, the state and in Louisiana in the northern part. Well, Ginger, what, uh, of course, Union County is the, probably the biggest, most populated uh, county, and I, I would assume was the biggest user of, of the Sparta right. uh, in our particular region and counties. So what has been done to uh, try to stop that critical droppage of the water levels? Well, there were a lot of things that were done. Um, the the main thing, uh, the most obvious thing is they did go to the river for uh, surface water. Uh, anytime you want industry in your area, so knowing that you've got an alternative water source is always something that's important to industry, and we all want industry, and um, so that was twofold. Uh, it did decrease water usage because we got the main industries using the river water and now let's be clear we're talking about the washita river the i washita think here's what river. we're talking about exactly and if i understand correctly you correct me if i'm wrong but y'all of course y'all have several major uh industries in the union county area chemical companies and so forth that do right. use quite a bit of, of, uh, of water, water. And so you, in effect, what you've done over there is you've got those type of entities taking water out of the Washita right. and utilizing it. Of course, I'm sure it has to be treated and then and, uh, put back uh, yes. in there. But so that took a lot of the pressure off of the Sparta as far as residential and small business usage. Exactly. You want to try to leave the potable water for, you know, I mean, the just have the potable water for people to use and the plants could use the surface water. And of course it was expensive to do that, but they built a pipeline and Line Oil, Great Lakes, um, uh, which is Chemtura now, Lancess, um, all of the major industries are using the river water, but one in particular, El Dorado Chemical, they use nothing but river water. And it was expensive for them to transition because the different 
uh, things they had to use the water for. They had to set it up different to use mm -hmm. river water. But they did that. And also, anytime people are looking at water, um, they're going to use less. They're going to be more careful if they have leaks or shutoff valves that aren't working. So anytime people are looking, water usage is going to decrease. So all the things put together, um, we decreased that water usage by 72% within a five-year period, which saved the Sparta, basically. And uh, Louisiana has been a little bit slower about getting those measures in place. Uh, you got to get the politicians behind you, you know, to get some things I'm stunned. Done. I'm just stunned <laughs> about that. Uh, yeah, and you make a very good point. This the, It can become a political issue, and I know we've experienced that uh, over the years, mm -hmm. today here in Warren, some of it back before your your time as being with the uh, uh, Water and Sewer Department here, but uh, people oftentimes have a resentment of the regulations being put in place or, you know, to try to deal with these issues or mandating that right. certain things be done. But if that had not been done, exactly, where were we going? And today, from a, just a local standpoint for Warren and our rural systems as well, but just for Warren, we didn't have the option of going to the Washita River or something like that to get water. And then even if you did, you're going to have to have a treatment facility completely to, different than than underground water. And I, you I, have I, to have full surface treatment. Yeah, I mean that's just a, it's a different animal. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. It's a completely different animal and and also costly. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I know your department has cooperated with them, and I understand we have monitors maybe on a, one of our wells here. We don't have like the automatic monitor. Um, Ginger actually comes and measures our well. Okay, so you actually come mm -hmm. physically. Physically, I'm the one that gets her hands dirty. I, I'm in there <laughs> in the field, uh, and I I do still measure. I have someone that helps me now, but for many years I did it by myself uh, in all the five counties. Well, I guess the, one of the points I want to make to our our viewers again, and and the people in this part of the, the area and more in Bradley County specifically is that we are watching this, always watching it, monitoring exactly. it, trying to make sure that we're not, uh, you know, about to go dry as far as having a, a water. Because as you said, we have, you said again, we pump in the winter probably 800 to 900,000 right. gallons. It's just under a million and then just a day. A day. A day. I want everybody to understand that. We're talking about a day. Yeah. And then uh, you, and know, you just over multiply a that over a, you know, over the year and you see how much water's uh, coming out of the system. Mm -hmm. But it, where, where are we right now, Ginger? It's just kind of as of today, you kind of, are, are we still dropping? Are we remaining stable? Uh, the, we're coming up. Uh, so we're recharging. It, this. Yes, it is slowly. It's a very slow recharging process just for the people that don't know the aquifer actually gets shallower as it moves toward the northwest of the aquifer and along that edge it literally comes to the surface and that is where it recharges and so you can see why it takes so long to recharge because there's no trickle through from rain uh, there's a layer of clay on the top of this aquifer. It's a pressurized aquifer. So it doesn't get water from rain. It can only recharge from where it comes to the surface or where it hits a body of water. So it takes forever to recharge. So that's why it's so critical that we decrease the usage. And, and we are coming up. We've got some wells in Union County that have come up over 100 feet. Um, when I remember one well in particular in Union County, I used the full length of a 500 foot tape and didn't hit water. And now that, me that what same well is measuring around 345 feet to water. So you can see that's come up a, a lot. So you literally use some type of tape measure? I have a to steel tape that you physically put down in the well and where it marks, you subtract however far you went down to where it marks, and that's the distance from the soil to water. 
and then in some cases we use an electric tape uh, and then other cases we have the transducer that takes measurements for us. But all that data goes to the United States Geological Survey and they use that to, they, they actually did a, uh, um, I can't think of the word, but they made a model mm -hmm. uh, of what would happen. They predicted what would happen if we, you know, if each of the wells that I measured, I gave them what they normally used and they predicted what would happen if we didn't decrease usage. So, you know, and that was what they used to see what would happen, you know, if we did not decrease the usage. And, uh, but anyway, it's coming up. Uh, I looked at your number five well this morning, mm -hmm. and when when that well was first drilled, it was I think it was 370 feet, uh, not the depth, but the water level, and it's holding its own. It actually came up to around 350 at one point. It's gone back down just a little bit, but you have to keep in mind that's within a half a mile of another pumping well. Right. So all of our wells are close together. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So they're affected. You know, if they're sure. close like okay. that, those, even though that well is not being pumped, it would be affected by one that is because they're close together. Tanae, how many water wells does the city of Warren have? We have a total of four, but we actively use two and we use the other two as backups. Okay. So where are they, where are they located roughly? In they're all in the city limits? Yes. They're all centrally located in the middle of, roughly in the middle of town. Okay. Uh, I used to know, I think the last time that a well was put in, what, what, does, what does a well roughly cost to be installed? Um, the last one cost us about a half a million dollars and that was, um, I think we put that in in 2010. Half a million dollars. I want everybody to, to hear that number. I mean, this is not a cheap no. thing to, to do to provide a, you know, we're a public utility, of course. I, I hope most of our viewers in, in Warren understand the way our system works. Uh, our water and sewer department is a publicly owned utility, publicly owned by the city of Warren. But we have a commission, uh, of course, that's set up. It's not part of city government. It is, but it it's is. but but it's not a, they're a under point, the, yeah, right. they're not a not under the, the city council. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a completely separate entity, mm -hmm. so to speak. And uh, uh, we have a three member commission that uh, is appointed, and I believe the city council has to confirm those appointments. Mm -hmm. You work for the commission. You are an employee of the Warren Water and Sewer Commission, and they're your bosses, and and uh, they run the system. And then, of course, y'all do keep. I know from history, you keep the city, uh, the mayor, and the city council very well informed on everything y'all are doing. They, they get monthly reports on your meetings, uh, commission meetings, and things that you do. And uh, of course, anytime the city. Uh, has to do a say a bond issue to borrow money to do something with the system uh, or or uh, rates have to be altered some way the city council does have to do that correct because, only the city council can raise our rates that's and, right um, all of our um, loans or anything like that council we my commission can't encumber the city the city council has to do that. exactly well I, I just it's important people understand how that works uh, uh, I know we got other communities right here around us that it's not don't operate exactly that way. It all falls under the city council. Uh, uh, your counterparts, in some cases, work for the mayor or the city council directly. Uh, uh, just a little editorial comment on my part here, but uh, I think our commission system has worked very, very well for the for the city of Warren. Uh, Ginger, I'm editorializing, as I said a little bit here about our local situation, but it, it's a it's a public utility, but it's a business also, and it has to be run in a business-like manner. And you got to be looking down the road, you know, and, and things like the water levels and, and, you know, how many wells you need and elevated water tanks and, you know, all those kind of things that come into play. And we're not even touching the wastewater treatment facilities. Well, that's a whole another thing so uh t tell me 
uh, Ginger, if you can, I mean, you, you're on an ongoing basis, you're testing these wells. And I guess in the five counties that you mentioned, right. that's the ones you work. Right. So you're, you're constantly measuring and, and trying to keep up with all of this. Are, are there any other plans uh, underway to try to do anything further to, uh, uh, you know, cut back on the amount of water being taken out of the, the Sparta? Or we feel like we're just trying to kind of stay where we are just right now. trying to maintain, I think, now and just continue to monitor if anything does change and any other any further measures need to be taken, you know, they may do that at some point, but right now they're continuing to rise in most places. Uh, we, we did have some monitoring in Louisiana. I still have one well that I monitor in Louisiana, but they do monitor in Louisiana as well. And it, you know, it, it does make a difference because at one point the cones of depression coalesced and mm -hmm. so, you know, both states have to work at this, and they are doing that in Louisiana now. So, so far we're just maintaining and continuing to rise, and we want to keep it that way. Do we have very many private wells, either industrial or, of course, I remember back when I was a youngster, everybody lived out in the country. Had a well. Had a well. <laughs> you know, there wasn't, of course, we've got so many folks on these rural systems now. That's been a major change by the way in the in the whole water business but do we have how, how much residential there I versus have, commercial usage of the sparta do you know i have some of each um there it just depends on the county mm -hmm. um there are probably i would say more um wells that are not residential in Union County, but in this county there's uh, a lot of privately owned wells and um, in, in a lot of counties there are. I measure a variety of different kinds of wells. Um, some we actually drilled for monitoring wells, but the best well to measure is one that's not pumping uh, because that gives you a static water level, which is what you're looking for. If it's a pumping well, it can be drawn down and you won't get a clear picture of what the aquifer is actually doing. Whereas like number five, it doesn't pump. So that's a clearer picture of what the aquifer is doing. So that's basically what you want. And some of the wells I measure are just older wells that used to be in use, but are not anymore. And it's a benefit to the owner of the well because they don't have to pay to fill the well in mm -hmm. and we can use it to monitor. So we both okay. benefit from that. Terrific. Tanae, do you know how much commercial usage of, of water that we have in the, say, the city of Warren? We track those um, yearly. Mm -hmm. I, I don't... You got any rough idea on percentage? Uh, we don't track them percentage wise. We just look at um, gallons, residential gallons, commercial, and I'm, I can't quote those, um, but we do um, yearly reports on those. And then we um, look at um, commercial, residential, and then what we sell to rural systems. Okay. Well, so uh, I'm, I'm going to guess here from my past knowledge and just what both of you have been saying today is. The city of Warren probably hadn't had anything like the commercial usage, manufacturing, uh, that business usage, that, like Union County does, for example. So we've had some, I know, over the years, but uh, I know the poultry industry and uh, probably some of the, maybe the bigger users mm -hmm. when we've had the poultry plants yeah. working. Uh, and and uh, you know, that could certainly happen again, uh, but we just have to wait and see. But uh, but at this point, we're in good shape mm -hmm. in, in Warren and Bradley County with our the system. A lot of because of what's been done, uh, particularly even in Union County, what's been done mm -hmm. there yeah. has helped us. Yeah, it does. I mean, it helps everybody. Uh, and, and other counties too, like Columbia County, actually they had surface water before mm -hmm. we did, before it was ever brought to the public's attention. You know, they had already built Lake Columbia for right. that reason. So, 
you know, they kind of were ahead of the game. Do they use uh, Lake Columbia for their water supply? They do most of the time, but I think uh, from time to time to time they have to use their wells. They do have wells, mm-hmm. and they but they the majority of their water comes from Lake Columbia. But I think right now they might be using more well water just because they had an issue with the treatment plants. So, uh, okay. but they've got that. You know, they can they can use surface water when they need to, and if they can't use it for some reason, they can switch back to wells. So, you know, they've got an option there. Okay. Um, today I was going to ask, uh, back again, let's go back to the our fun time we had during the snow about a few weeks ago. <laughs> <clears throat> We don't. What kind of treatment do we have to give to our water coming out of the spot, uh, the Sparta now here in Warren? What what has to be done? We we pull it out. What do we do with it then? Um, all we have to do is chlorinate our water, and then by state law we have to add fluoride. Okay. But fluoride doesn't actually um, treating the water as far as cleaning or um, anything like that. That's just for fluoride for is more for, for yeah. It's more. Uh, 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 I served a little tenure in the Arkansas legislature, and that was when flu- fluoride was a big issue. There were people that were against that, you know, that being put in the water, but uh, the medical community was very strongly supportive of that being done. But but all we do is just put some chlorine, chlorine in it. Mm-hmm. But there's certain amounts you, you put in there. Mm-hmm. Just to, but it comes out of Sparta pretty clean, doesn't it? it? Does. We're very blessed from that standpoint. It's a, it's a good quality of water mm-hmm. for the most part. So in the whole scheme of things, we don't have to spend a tremendous amount of money. I, I'm sure we have to spend a lot of money, but on treating it as compared to treatment. a surface system right. would be. Exactly. That has to really go through extensive treatment, mm-hmm. you know. And then again, like we, like I said earlier, it costs the different businesses money to re, you know, repipe um, all their different functions in the plant because it has to have has to be different to handle river water, so it's expensive for them too. But once you get it in place, then you know it's it's a good thing to have because, like you, like I said, they have an option. They they can use river water, water, or they can use city water. Today, during our, our recent uh, weather situation, we were put under a boiling order. Mm-hmm. You had to do that for, yes. wasn't too terribly long, but we had to for a few days. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you kind of explain why we had to do that? Because we did not run out of water. We did not run out of water, and we were able to maintain water pressure um, once um, once we got above freezing, we had a lot of customers that had um, their pipes that had frozen, started bursting, and we were pumping 2.2 million gallons a day. Compared to a normal... Compared to our normal, just under a million. Yeah. And it was more water than we were able to treat with chlorine. So we lost our chlorine residual, uh, leaving our plant. So, so that's we, why we went under bull order. We just... Uh, I would, I would so, guess that we weren't too concerned that we were you know in any kind of danger but just from a regulatory standpoint yes. you had to you had to put that boiling order on so our people had water they just had to to, to drink it or use it uh, physically they had to uh, they had to boil it so and then of course you guys got out there and I want to I want to commend you I think Celine River Chronicles already done that in an editorial along with a lot of our other uh, public employees, but mm-hmm. your your guys got to get out in the really freezing temperatures freezing. and dig and some snow. holes and get down in them, did you? Because of water main leaks. Yes. But a lot of what you Early were referring to night, yeah. was was private. Yes. The water lines that belong to the the homeowner or the business mm-hmm. owner, because when they froze and thawed uh, up, I and, mean, we we did have six main breaks, but. Um, at that point, I mean, we got those fixed fairly quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so we made sure we had water and that everyone had water and we maintained pressure. And at that point, we were not using 
um, too much water that we could not treat it and we could keep everyone in water. It wasn't until several days later that we started having issues with how much water we were using. Mm -hmm. We just couldn't get enough chlorine. We didn't have the detention time to treat it. I got you. So uh, it's important for people to understand that. And I know you were recently at the city council meeting and kind of went over all that with the mayor and the city council. And uh, uh, they were very receptive, it appeared to me, to your, your explanation. Of course, when things like that happen, they all start hearing from everybody too, just like your, your just office like does. Do. <laughs> and so it was nice and, and very appropriate for you to, you know, brief them, keep them informed as I think you did all through the process. And uh, there's a lot involved in running a public utility. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot the, that goes on that the public doesn't see. That's right. Well, it's, it's just a lot to it. And we, we're, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say this, I'm, we're very blessed in our community. And I know other communities as well to have uh, uh, good good systems and, and good people running them. And I want to just tell you, we, we appreciate everything you and your entire uh, staff did all during that time period. And then do every day, but that was some unusual circumstances and uh, not the best time to be out in the middle of a dugout hole in the middle of the street somewhere <laughs> trying to work on it with the snowing and being uh, maybe five degrees or whatever it is. So uh, we appreciate that. Uh, anything on the legislative side going on about water this day and time that you know of, uh, Ginger? Any? Uh, Not that I know of. Um, I, there may be something, but I I don't know of it right yeah. now. Well, we uh, we certainly appreciate uh, the time that you. Anything else you want to add that you just maybe I didn't ask or. Uh, talk about what y'all are doing, but the, the main thing is you are keeping a regular, literally daily, well, certainly monthly, but to some degree daily check on the on the water levels. That's right. We just want to make sure that we have good, clean water to drink, and that's been my mission, and I felt like it was important uh, so that our children and our children's children can still enjoy uh, the Sparta Aquifer. So. We continue to do that. Let, let me ask you one other one other question, uh, kind of getting out of the Sparta, and you may not be on top of all this. I'm sure you do, you know, have some knowledge of it. As you get over into further eastern Arkansas and maybe a little bit north of us, uh, uh, you get into a, a different area. Right. And, of course, it's farming country. And I know this has been a big issue over in, in that area, too. I'm talking about Chico County and Deshaie County and right. and uh, Arkansas County and, and even Drew County, uh, you know, to some degree, Ashley County. Uh, a lot of water gets taken out of their ground for farming purposes, for irrigation. Right. It's it's It's... The equivalent to a big industry use of water, if not even more. Absolutely. Uh, what what's kind of their situations right now? Do you have any well, knowledge I, of that? I'm not the most knowledgeable person on that, but I do know that they have declared an area up there critical water use, like they did down here, mm -hmm. because it did. You know, the rice farmers and they're they're using a lot of water, but I think also they have in place. Uh, the runoff to reuse runoff they have come up with some different methods for the farmers to use that and that has helped some uh, but yeah it's it's happening all over um, we're not the only ones that have a situation with with water so well, it seems to me like in the past years there have been some discussions over there about trying to um, you know, bank up water, for lack of a better way to say it, you know, create ponds or holding areas and right. uh, even for rainwater and, and, and runoff and all that type of thing to try to use some of that for irrigation purposes versus right. pull it out of the ground. Is, is there anything still being done on any of that that you know well, of? Yeah, they, you know, like I said about Louisiana, they're, they're, they talk about it and they do studies about it. And, but as far as I know, they, they have not actually done that yet. Okay. Uh, but I think that's in the, in the works, or at least they have done studies about it. Um, 
but to my knowledge, I don't think they've built any surface um, alternative water, you know, situations. Okay. But really, it's a it's it's bad to pull out of the aquifer, you yeah. know, to to use that for irrigation. Well, I guess I'm gonna on that. I'm gonna say thank you to the Union County folks who did <laughs> who did step up and do a lot of, of good things that if and that the industry as well as the one more thing. Sure. Uh, 2008, this project did win uh, the Department of Interior award, uh, so we were proud of that. Absolutely. Well, that's that's great. That's great. Yeah. Well, we sure appreciate you. Uh, making a trip to Warren today and, and, to and visiting here. with us and kind of further educating us a little bit, reminding us of some things and educating us on on this. And uh, today, anything else you want to add? Anything you want to uh, mention? Not that I can think of. Okay. Well, I, again, we appreciate the good job you and your department and your commission. I want to. You're, you've, mm -hmm. You've had good commissioners uh, over the years because I've known every one of them, and they they really uh, try to do what's right for the for the community and making sure we have good quality and quantity of water, and and then take care of all the treatment issues as well. So we and they try their best to do it at the absolute best price they can do it at, and uh, keep the cost down on the on the rate payers. But uh, as we say, nothing's free. We have to. We have to do it, but we do appreciate all y'all's efforts and, and uh, uh, feel free to always keep us informed of anything we need to know to get out to the public. Let them know, and Ginger, you do the same thing. Thank you for having me today. Appreciate both of you.